Hey everybody, it's Mr. Carr. Uh, today we'll be covering 2D Day 2, which is on conversions. So this is actually our lasty, uh, last lesson in Unit 2, okay? So when we're looking at this, we're looking at conversions. I don't know why we're calling it with literal equations. We're not really doing that, okay? We do conversions. We are going to be doing stuff with this. We're going to set up ratios, okay? And that is everything here that can help us. So these are all conversions that we can know. So 12 inches for one foot, 5,280 feet in one mile. Go over here to some metric. We got 100 centimeters in one meter and so on. Okay. So this is a good reference to use. Let's, we'll go back, uh, back and forth when we need to. But let's look at some of our conversions we can do. An island is about one mile long. How long is the island in feet? When we do our conversions, we're going to start like this. We have one mile, okay, over one. That's our starting amount, one mile. To do a conversion, we're going to multiply this by one of our ratios. While the direct connection is going to be right here. We can connect feet and miles. So remember how we said I could write it as a ratio. That means I could do this, 5,280 feet in one mile. Or I can flip it as a ratio and make it one mile per 5,280 feet. And what I'm looking for is this. When I do my conversions, the way I've always done them is I'm trying to cancel out certain things. I want to turn miles into feet. So this one mile that I start with, I need to get rid of it. So that means down here, I'm going to have a mile. Well, let me look at my ratios again. That's the one I would use. Okay, that has mile in the denominator. So I'm going to write 5,280 feet per one mile. So that's my ratio I want. What happens here is if you think of it kind of like, um, kind of like with our reducing fractions, if I have on a diagonal things that match up, I can kind of cancel it out here. So if I cancel out the miles like that, I'm left with the feet. And this one's straightforward. It's just 5,280 feet. But I want you to see this conversion on a very basic level and see how it works, because now we should be able to do a little bit more with these other two. A car travels a distance of 100 feet in about 2.8 seconds. What is the velocity of the car in miles per hour? So this is a fun one because we're actually going to be doing 100 feet in 2.8 seconds. I'm going to set up a ratio from the first step there. Okay, if I start thinking about this, I want to get into miles and I want to get into hours. There's two conversions I need to do. The first thing I'll do is let's get rid of feet. Okay, so remember with feet, if I want to get to miles, that is 5,280 feet per one mile. And again, I put this on the bottom because I want feet and feet to be on a diagonal. Okay, so if they're on a diagonal like this, that means they can cancel each other out for the, the units. The other thing I got to do is I need to turn seconds into hours. So 100 feet in 2.8 seconds, that means I have 60 seconds in one minute. So I'm kind of going back up here. I kind of just remembered it, but 60 seconds in one minute, but then also 60 minutes in one hour. So that means I need to do that again. So 60 seconds in one minute, and then 60 minutes in one hour. So let's take a quick look and see what cancels out in terms of those labels. Feet and feet cancel out. Seconds and seconds cancel out. Minutes and minutes cancel out. I'm left with miles in the numerator, hours in the denominator, and that is miles per hour. So my last step is just multiply everything through. So I look at my fractions, I've got 100 times 60 times 60 over a denominator of 2.8 times 5,280. Okay, that's all I'm doing. I'm just doing my uh, multiplication here, multiplication and division. Okay, so I've got 100 times 60 times 60. So that's going to give me 360,000. And then 2.8 times 5,280, it's going to give me 14,784. And my last step is to go ahead and divide these out. 
So I got 360,000 divided by 14,784. And I get 24.351. Okay. Um, I can be this exact. We usually wouldn't be. We'd probably round it. But the velocity of the car is 24.351 miles per hour. Okay. All right. So that one was a good one because we had to do two conversions at that same time. We had to get rid of the feet and get rid of seconds. Okay. So again, feet cancel out on a diagonal. So I'm left with miles. So miles are done. We started with seconds. So I cancel out seconds on an angle. So that gave me minutes here. And then I canceled out minutes here and here to, uh, so that I had hours to work with. All right. Last example here. It takes three days for a train to go from New York to San Francisco. What is the time in seconds? So I have three days. It's not quite a ratio because I'm not comparing the number of days here to anything else. I do want to get down to seconds. So I look back and I look at what I've got going on here. We've got one day is 24 hours. And then remember that one hour, 60 minutes, and then every minute is 60 seconds. So three days times one day has 24 hours. Oh, it did it again. I don't know why it does that. Okay, so three days, just to make sure we're clear, I'm using this as a reference, 60 seconds per minute. Well, so we're starting with one day is 24 hours, and then we're going to go with the fact that every hour is 60 minutes, and then every minute is 60 seconds. So we're going to use all three of those ratios there. So I got 24 hours per day. If I do the number of hours, so in one hour here, there's going to be 60 minutes. And then for every one minute, there is 60 seconds. So all I have to do now is I look for here, I've got days canceling out, I've got hours canceling out, and minutes canceling out, all I'm left with is seconds, which is what I'm solving for here. I notice I got all ones in the denominator, so my answer here is going to end up being 3 times 24 times 60 times 60. Okay, and we do that. We got 3 times 24 uh, plus, whoops, times 60 times 60. So we get 259,200 seconds. Whew, that's a lot of seconds. Okay, so that's for three days. That's how long it takes in terms of seconds. So we started with three days, and then we converted that into seconds by going through this process here that cancels out those common labels. Okay, and that is it. I don't know why we call this under literal equations. It should be under ratios, but it's fine. Good enough. All right, that's it for me. Take care, everybody. Did it again. Fun.